Now we all know that DNA is a very important substance in the human body. So in the human body, we've, our bodies are obviously made up of millions and millions of cells. Small cells that are sort of to dictate how our body functions and control how our body functions. Now each cell in our body contains 46 DNA molecules or also known as chromosomes. So 46 DNA molecules or we could say we have 23 pairs. So they're also called chromosomes and these DNA molecules are in fact condensation polymers. So these are condensation polymers of little things that we call nucleotides. So we've got each cell in our body has 46 DNA molecules or 46 chromosomes and these DNA molecules are in fact condensation polymers of nucleotides. Now what is a nucleotide? How do we produce a nucleotide? Well a nucleotide contains three different things which I've drawn here. Each nucleotide contains a phosphate group which looks like this, a deoxyribose sugar group which looks like this, and a base. Now there are four different types of bases uh, that uh, can exist in a, nucleot in a nucleotide. We have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And so because each of these four different bases has a different chemical structure. And so here what I've drawn for the structure of our base is just the generic uh, the generic sort of basic part of each that is common to all of the base molecules. However, these four different bases are in fact slightly different and have different uh, different functional groups added on to all of these carbons that form this ring here. So all these bases have this as their basic structure but have lots of different things going on coming off this, uh, this ring of carbons with this nitrogen atom here. And so each nucleotide has this phosphate group, this deoxyribose sugar group, and this base. And so these three things, these three, this phosphate, deoxyribose, and the base, all bond together via condensation reactions. So what happens then is that here we have a, uh, a condensation reaction that produces water. So here we split off a hydrogen from there and a hydroxyl group here. And so what we get is we get a direct bond between this carbon here and this oxygen. So it looks like this. And of course, by splitting off the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen, we get a water molecule produced. And so that's how the phosphate group and the deoxyribose sugar group are bonded together by this, uh, this covalent bond produced in a condensation reaction. Similarly, over here, we've got a hydrogen there and a hydroxyl group there. So what happens is this, hydro this hydrogen and this hydroxyl group all get split off to produce a water molecule. So we can get rid of those now. And what we get instead is a direct bond between, uh, between this carbon here in this, uh, in this ring, in this deoxyribose sugar group. This, this corner represents a carbon. So we get a direct bond between that carbon and that nitrogen. And so now this, this one molecule that we have is what we call a nucleotide. And so DNA molecules are in fact condensation polymers of many, many thousands of nucleotides. So what happens if we have, if, is if we have one nucleotide here, then the phosphate group from a nucleotide below may come up like this. So we may have phosphate there looking like this. And it is going to be connected to off to its own deoxyribose sugar group like that off the page there. However, what happens is that these two nucleotides, this nucleotide here and this nucleotide here, bond together via a condensation reaction. So again, we get the exact same thing happening. We get our hydroxyl group there and our hydrogen there splitting off to form a water molecule. And we get a new bond forming between the deoxyribose of one nucleotide and the phosphate group of another nucleotide. And so then what we get 
is we get lots and lots of these nucleotides bonding together all in a straight line chain like that, each with a different base. And so what we get is a condensation polymer, a polymer produced by lots of monomers undergoing condensation reactions with one another. So because we have four different bases possible in each nucleotide, it means that we have four different types of nucleotides possible, and it's the sequence of different nucleotides in this polymer, in this condensation polymer, that uh, makes D DNA unique, makes, makes one person's DNA different to another person's. And so because our DNA molecule is made from uh, lots and lots of groups of these, lots and lots of nucleotides bonded together in one long strand, we sort of have, what we end up with is two different ends of our nucleotide. So if this was the top of our nucleotide, then what we have is we have an unbonded hydroxyl group. Throughout, throughout our DNA molecule, this hydroxyl group on every phosphate group is going to be bonded via a condensation reaction just the way this one is here. However, at the very end of our DNA molecule, this phosphate group has nothing to bond with. So this is the only phosphate group in our whole DNA molecule as we go on and on and on down, down the page and, can, uh, and we have more and more nucleotides. This is the only phosphate group that has an unbonded hydroxyl group there. Every other phosphate group has its hydroxyl group, has had its hydro hydroxyl group destroyed to produce a, a water molecule and then bond with a deoxyribose sugar group in a different nucleotide. So at one end of our DNA molecule, we have an unbonded hydroxyl group. Now, if we were to go the other way, and we in fact looked at the bottom end of our DNA molecule. So we've still got this here. And then in fact we had something that looked like this. And then this this oxygen was now bonded to the uh, the the obviously the deoxyribose deoxy sugar group. Then that means that this is the other end of our DNA molecule, and the other end of, our, of that same DNA molecule looks slightly different. Rather than ending with a phosphate group with its own hydroxyl, hydroxyl group, which we had earlier, the other end ends with a deoxyribose sugar group that has its own hydroxyl group. So every, again, every other deoxyribose sugar group will have uh, an unbonded, will have, sorry, it's... It, its hydroxyl group here bonded to another phosphate group. But here, because we're at the end, this deoxyribose doesn't need to bond to any more phosphate groups. And thus, this hydroxyl group remains intact. So that makes this end, that makes both ends of our DNA molecule unique. They're slightly different to one another. One, one end ends with a the hydroxyl group of a deoxyribose sugar, while the other end ends with the hydroxyl group of a phosphate group. So that's why it's, it, it is in fact important to distinguish between the different ends of DNA molecules. And so that is how our DNA is produced. We have lots and lots of these nucleotides bonding together like that. Our nucleotide is in fact, each nucleotide is in fact just, just this group here. However, these can bond at both ends to form a condensation polymer, and we call that condensation polymer a DNA molecule. So these DNA molecules have lots and lots of different sequences of their different nucleotides. You could also say that these DNA molecules have lots of sequences of the different bases, and it's these sequences of bases that make up the proteins which, are, which, are, which our body is made out of. So it's our DNA that controls the different proteins that are produced within our body that give us various things like our physical appearance or a different different frames and different shapes and sizes. And so that is where it comes from, these different order of these bases along our condensation polymer chain. So now for a bit of an example, we're gonna say that we've got two phosphate groups. Well, that's probably not the chemical formula of the, of the exact phosphate group we're using here. So we'll just say we've got two phosphates We've got two, two sugars, two deoxyriboses, and two bases. And let's say that all these these all these these two phosphates, these two sugars, and these two bases have all bonded together to form two nucleotides. And then those two nucleotides have bonded together to form sort of a uh, one little segment of a DNA molecule, just a one that formed one molecule that contains two nucleotides. So how many water molecules? are going to be produced in this process. 
Well, if we have our phosphate here, if we draw it out like this, if we have our phosphates there, if we have our deoxyribose sugars here, and we have our bases here, then we know that in the production of each nucleotide, we're going to have a condensation reaction occurring between our sugar group and our phosphate group, and that's going to produce one water molecule. We're going to have one occurring between our sugar group and our base. That's going to produce another molecule. And those same two reactions will occur in both nucleotides. So the same thing will happen here and here. Now the next thing to consider is the fact that to bond the two nucleotides together, they must undergo another condensation reaction. So now this phosphate group of one nucleotide will bond to the sugar group of another nucleotide via a condensation reaction to produce a fifth water molecule. So now that we know that if we have two nucleotides, if we create two nucleotides using two phosphate groups, two sugar groups, and two bases, then we're going to have five H2O molecules, five mole water molecules produced. And so this little diagram here also gives a good visual representation of that idea how each end of a DNA molecule is different. If we if we just had a DNA molecule that only contained two nucleotides, then we can see that one end ends with a phosphate group, with an unbonded hydroxyl like that, whereas the other end is different and ends with its own hydroxyl group, however this time off a deoxyribose sugar. So in that way, we can see, clearly see how each end of our DNA molecule is different. One ends with a sugar group, one ends with a phosphate group. So this becomes important when we look at when we look further at the sort of the bigger structure of a DNA molecule. However, that's that's the that's kind of a microscopic view of DNA molecules and how how they are formed and how they are formed from these smaller smaller little groups, smaller little molecules called nucleotides.